<laughs> Hi guys, it is another just miserable, brutal midsummer day here in the uh, crock pot of the end times um, in the former paradise of Garfield, Texas. We have made it to Friday, May 25th, 2018. So I'm going to just keep on doing uh, what I've been doing every Friday <coughs> for years now, and that's bringing you my <coughs> two-part ecological meltdown roundup ramp where I simply uh, where I simply open my email box for more evidence of how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour <coughs> while we're all talking about uh, whatever the hell we're talking about uh, and as I always do I'm going to start over there on my number one favorite environmental news roundup of them all from mongabay.com <coughs> see what my apocalyptic buddy Rhett Butler and the boys have to share with us this week how does this this was Rhett's pick for the uh, headline of the week how does this work for a doomsday headline I'm quite sure you will not find this story in the mainstream media. <clears throat> Venezuela's hungry hunt wildlife and zoo animals as economic crisis grows. Venezuela is suffering a disastrous economic crisis with inflation expected to hit 13,000 percent this year there has been a collapse of their agricultural productivity, commercial transportation, and other services, which has already resulted in severe food shortages. As people starve, they are increasingly hunting wildlife and sometimes even zoo animals. Reports from the nation's zoo say that animals are emaciated, uh, with keepers being forced to feed one of their wildlife, one of their zoo animals, to the other zoo animals, just to keep some alive. Just to keep some alive. Uh, there have been reports of mammals and birds being stolen uh, from zoo collections. The economic crisis makes scientific data gathering difficult, but a significant uptick in the harvesting of Guiana dolphins has been observed. Uh, the, you know, this protected uh, dolphin. The grizzly remains of hunted pink flamingos have been found repeatedly on Lake Maracaibo. Also, Within the, within the estuary itself, there has also been a rise in the harvesting of sea turtles, including the vulnerable leatherback and the critically endangered hawksbill. So, uh, guys, this is just an absolutely perfect example. I interviewed uh, this fellow, uh, Bill Gady, I believe, G-A-E-D-E, -E, for my Voices of the Doomosphere uh, last fall, and, and what he was predicting, not, uh, not completely, uh, ironically, that he said, if you want to know where the sixth mass extinction uh, is unfolding on this planet, he goes, you don't even need to look at climate change, you just need to look at hungry people. That uh, according to Bill, and, and, and this is perfect evidence to his prediction, that humans will simply, as, as the global industrial economy collapses, which it needs to do, all that means when people start starving, they will eat every single one of our fellow earthlings all this planet that we share this planet with that hungry humans 
uh, the swarm of, of humans will kill and eat every single other uh, species of earthling to share this planet with and then we will just start eating each other until eventually there's two people left either to fuck or to eat each other and he's going with they're gonna eat uh, there will be one person standing and finally I guess there won't be anyone around to eat him but anyway I'm spending way too much time on this story Mo moving along let me get my two uh, so let's go to this story. Let's go back down there to the Brazilian Amazon. Illegal loggers cook the books to harvest the Amazon's most valuable tree. Wow. A new study finds that illegal logging coupled with weak state-run timber licensing systems has led to massive timber harvesting fraud, fraud in Brazil resulting in huge illicit harvest of Ipe trees. This process is doing major damage to the Amazon rainforest as loggers build roads deep into forest causing fragmentation and creating greater access. Anyway, uh, where do you think the wood is going? Ipe wood is largely shipped to the U.S. and Europe. Analysts say that the buyers all along the timber supply chain turn a blind eye toward fraud. Hmm. With sawmills, exporters, and importers trusting the paperwork they receive. Okay, so I just want to go from that story to this story. Brazil has the tools to end Amazon deforestation now! Yes, this is the group, the organization known as the De Zero Deforestation Working Group propose workable strategies for ending deforestation quickly in Brazil while also yielding significant economic and social benefits. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I've. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna move on. Uh. All right. I'm just kind of going back. Let's go over there from the shithole country of Brazil to the shithole country of Kenya, where we find. Agroforestry, agroforestry gives Kenyan indigenous community a lifeline. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. All right, enough of that. Wow, let me uh, switch my buttons. An unsuspecting, <coughs> huh? Well, I don't know which button. In unsuspecting Indian villages, unsuspecting Indian villages in India, the international rhino horn trade takes a toll. The vast majority of villagers around India's Jaldapara National Park live in harmony with the area's wildlife. But a small majority get involved in rhino poaching. 
Okay, from the shithole country of India to, let's just keep up this one, African vultures, like, like vultures everywhere on this planet, including the California condor in our own shithole country. African vultures under the gun as lead ammunition takes a toll. Fragments of lead ammunition in abandoned animal carcasses are poisoning Africa's vultures, a new study has found. The study adds to the growing evidence from around the world that identifies lead ammunition as a problem for a number of bird species. South African hunters are sympathetic to vultures, but oppose a ban on lead ammunition. Okay, let's see. Uh, I've just got to uh, skip ahead on a lot of these. I mentioned this one already from the mainstream media. It always bears repeating. Chinese giant salamander is at least five species, and all are nearly extinct. Uh, scientists who spent four years surveying the Chinese giant salamanders preferred river, river habitats across 97 places in China spotted only 24 individual salamanders at four sites. Let's see. Wow, I, I can, uh, being an eco-Nazi, I, uh, I, I can relate to these poor guys. Wildlife rangers face a toxic mix of mental strain and lack of support. Uh, <laughs> I know exactly how you feel, guys. <clears throat> Wildlife rangers, like eco-Nazis, are facing numerous psychological pressures leading to potentially serious mental health implications. Rangers tracking wildlife crime and defending natural habitats in parts of Africa and Asia are frequently subjected to violent confrontations. There you go. Uh, there is currently very little awareness of the mental strain placed on rangers and eco-Nazis, and a dearth of research into the potential mental health issues they both face. Let's see. Uh, Anyway, guys, I would love to, to make a rant about every one of these. Here's just a no-shit Sherlock story from the shithole country of Ghana. Hunters are wiping out hornbills in Ghana's forest. According to a new study, Ghana is losing hornbill species to uncontrolled hunting, mostly for bushmeat from its forested parks and reserves. The researchers found that the five largest species of hornbills in the Baya Biosphere Reserve, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, have disappeared in recent decades. The authors of the paper suggest that increased enforcement will help 
protect, threaten hornbills, as well as other wildlife species in areas under intense pressure from humans. Wow. Let's go back over to the shithole hall country of India. A trio of new studies challenges the Indian government's claim of increasing forest cover. The Indian government's claim of increasing forest cover in India. Three studies published recently show that forest cover in India is actually declining contrary to findings from the latest forest survey of India report. Is there anybody on this planet down here in Humpty Dumpty tribe who for one fucking nanosecond would uh, would believe one goddamn word from uh, these various environment ministers from every shithole country on this planet, including ours, that uh, there is any sign of hope uh, in their country. Uh, these lying sacks of shit. Is there anybody who does not understand this? Sancho Panza says, I understand it, Pop. Sancho Panza understands this. Anyway, moving along. Wow! For This is for our, our uh, worse than previously thought headline of the week. We can no longer get through. Uh, and a, a, an environmental, ecological uh, roundup without a worse than previously thought headline of the week. What is the one, the winner this week? Roads, roads <clears throat> might pose an even bigger threat to Southeast Asia's forest and biodiversity than previously Thoughts. Okay. Would you believe that global analyses often underestimate the levels of deforestation driven by road building in the Indo-Malaysia region and any other region on the planet? <coughs> there you go. Uh, many of these analyses miss as much as 99% of the damage that these roads are actually increasing. Hmm. Quoting uh, the, the report author, somebody Hughes, uh, not only does this mean that any analysis based on global roads data sets will underestimate the level of fragmentation and overestimate the forest coverage of a region, but most forms of exploitation also occur within close proximity to a road. Uh, and anyone who is not aware of this, electric vehicles electric vehicles drive down roads. Anybody who does not understand that roads are every single big uh, a bit of a threat to this planet uh, as the cars that drive down them. And it makes no fucking difference what is coming out of the tailpipe. We're not even going to get into a tire rant. Okay, what is the single biggest threat to young great whales off the coast of the U.S.? Okay, we, we have several. If you're 
answer was collisions with cargo ships, as mine would have been, you would not win the dead whale prize. The, the winner of the threats to whales is fishing gear. Fishing lines and nets pose the most significant threat to the survival of, oh, I'm sorry, this said, oh, this was sharks, of sharks, not whales. I just can't read uh, uh, great white sharks. I'm sorry, I read whales. So my guess is that collisions with cargo ships are the single biggest threat to whales and fish getting tangled in fishing gear is the greatest threat to sharks. Okay, here is uh, the, the latest story about the expansion of Madagascar's, Madagascar's protected area network. Yes. Okay, we don't need to get off on a protected area rant. Uh, <coughs> all right, good God, this goes. Uh, oh, here is a new film. Uh, maybe we, Fiesta, we need to get an interview set up with Cyril Christo and Marie Wilkinson about their new documentary, Walking Thunder. Uh, talking about uh, documenting the African elephant's last stand. Christo calls the film a prayer for the species. Okay, but we're going to wind up down there in the shithole country of Australia. Uh, with this story, well, actually in the mainstream media, I just didn't get to it, but we'll wrap it up here. Tiny marsupial that practice, tiny marsupials that practice suicidal mating, mating declared endangered. Uh, the Australian government officially declared two species of recently described anti chinuses a mouse-like marsupial, is endangered. The species are famed for their marathon sex sessions that leave the males so exhausted that they die. Both species occur only in high-altitude forests and are threatened with extinction by climate change, habitat loss, and threats from feral cats, cattle, and horses. Anyway, guys, we're just going to wrap up uh, this uh, part one ecological roundup rant, and I'm going to come back with part two where we're going to go over to the Center for Biological Diversity and those old eco-Nazis at the Washington Post for more information of how we are going into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. But i got to see my little battery light is clicking, so I better change the battery before global industrial civilization collapses on me. Last little dog. Uh, We've got one more, one more rant. Bye, guys.